Remember when you started to make music? Sounds and samples were fun to place around on the grid and call it a banger of your life. Then someone on the internet turned it to ashes by saying it's boring, too simple and asked you to learn sound design. So you did and acquired your first synth just to realize that it is all about movement, LFOs, envelopes and mapping. In case you're still before the second chapter and crying about audio bullies, then get your shit together and listen up. LFO, which stands for low frequency oscillator, is simply a wave that you can hear. You can give it speed and shape and use it to move any parameter inside your synth. Or or if you use Ableton Live, literally anything you want. Honestly, you don't need to have a plan to make cool stuff, so let's try to use an appreciator on this block and try to modulate rate with LFO. So the first thing to do is to obviously determine which type of LFO we need and let's sync it with the tempo of the song. Half a bar will do for now. Map it to rate. It won't give me the cool effect I want because for now let's switch LFO rate to milliseconds and make it actually more smoother. We can obviously change the shape. Maybe try to increase the rate also. Let's stick with sign for a bit. And you know what? Let's try to make a cool sweep effect with this EQ. But for this one, we need another LFO. Let's map the LFO to the frequency of my second band. And if you're wondering why the curve isn't moving, don't worry, it's not a bug. It's actually a feature we wanted for ages. Since Live 12, there are two ways to use mappings. First one is the modulation and the second one is remote. We wanted modulation for ages since by using it, you can change this rate without changing the whole modulation that LFO is doing right now. And with remote, obviously you can see the curve moving, but if I switch to it, there is nothing much I can do to my starting value or basically anything other than just playing with those percentages. Not to mention, with modulation mode, we have two options, unipolar and bipolar. With bipolar, the modulation is going up and down from the starting point we have. And with unipolar, I can go only up or down percentage and the value which is going to be positive. That means the modulation is going from my starting point to the higher values and with negative values is actually the opposite. Okay, I wanted to make this EQ just to point out the difference between modulation and remote. Let's delete it actually because the real fun starts when you start to modulate LFO with another LFO. Warning, the following actions may become nerdy and complex to unexperienced viewers. Although you will be presented with easier Max for Life solution as the video progressed, learning how to manage modulation by yourself can only improve your skills. Alright, so what we can do here, let's actually sync this LFO as well and let's try to modulate the shape but you know what screw it let's bring envelope follower to the party in case you missed one of my previous videos Ableton actually introduced the sidechain option inside envelope follower which means I can use it here on this block and for example let's just use my kick as a sidechain source maybe let's try to map the LFO depth to envelope follower You can add more and more devices like that to the level of Virtual Riot or Net Rush complexity. But since 80% of producers have ADHD problems, chances are you will be lost after third modulation path. That's where this Max for Life device comes into play. It also offers way more customization options, but before I show it to you, let's map your mouse to like button and change the LFO speed to every video I post on this channel. See what I did there? It looks cool, but I couldn't wrap my head around for a second, especially once you start to use this randomization button. Turns out it only needs a proper introduction, which I'm gonna do here. By the way, I also managed to get you a discount code for it. You have three main options to control it. Manual, envelope follower, 
and LFO. Use the lawn, do nothing until you start to mess with shapes. So let's actually input the first shape here. You can set it like that and forget about it, but you can also sync it to tempo and make it move. But the beauty behind Knob Studio is that you can add up to four different shapes. And if you think about it, it starts to look like a wave shaping module. The first one is this random. Let's actually turn it to ramp up to make it easier to see. And now we have the sine wave. Let's decrease its range. So I'm shaping it to arrive at the half of my movement. We can go back to this ramp thing and actually decrease its range to the half. So now the half of this movement is this ramping thing and the other half is a simple sine wave. But the fun starts once you decide to make the one move. And you know what? Let's actually try to use envelope follower instead of LFO here. So as you can hear, it's very responsible whenever I increase the rise. It only plays this part of my wave, but if I would decrease it, obviously it will react faster to the kick. And go to the higher modulation values. And the cool thing missed by many is actually manual mode. You don't need Knob Studio for that since a standard version of Shaper has it. But as I have Knob Studio and a lot of different variations to try, let's do something with it. So let's make a quick washout effect and that will actually contain the auto filter. Then we'll do a basic reverb to increase the wetness of the reverb. Then I'll need to group those two and map both the frequency and the dry wet of reverb to macro. So once we have the simple macro set, we can use a manual mode, then do a bunch of different shapes. So now I can map it to my macro knob. Now we need to set it to remote and whenever I'm gonna use the manual knob, So long story short, you can predetermine and make cool automations like that inside this max Lab device. And listen, by any means, you don't need to use this many modulations and this particular max Lab device, but... Rock, rock, rock. 